Hi everyone, I am Erin McKell <laughs> and I am a really big fight fan. I love MMA, I watch a ton of it, I watch all the interviews, I watch all the analysis. I love MMA, especially women's MMA. So of course, you know, I was watching Home vs. Kohei even though it was an early morning fight. That's pretty, that's the only fight on the card that I did actually watch though. <laughs> and um, I wanted to talk a little bit about it and break down the fight, break down where Holly's career could go from here and just everything. Okay, because I feel like, I just feel like there's so much to say here. So, obviously before this, Holly was on a three fight losing streak and it seemed like this was kind of a last ditch effort for her to kind of get her shit together, really. Um, and, you know, it's, it's an interesting matchup. A lot of people didn't agree with it who were like really hardcore fans that actually sort of understand where people are in the rankings and all that stuff because Betch's last fight actually ended in a draw with Mari and Renault. And I definitely think that they should have rematched. Um, I thought the fight between them was really great and uh, I personally thought Mari and won that fight and I know a lot of people did and the fight was in Brazil so since Betch is Brazilian, it, you know, there is a certain amount of like bias and favoritism that definitely goes into things like that. But um, I definitely thought Marion won that fight. In fact, Betch actually had to, had to go to the hospital um, as a result of that fight because she had a concussion. So I definitely um, didn't agree with the decision, but I thought that they should have a rematch. And Obviously that didn't happen, which is a bummer. And I feel like Marion Renault really gets the short end of the stick and I really like her. And even though she is, I think she is the oldest female fighter on the roster, she's like 38 or 39. Um, you know, because she hasn't been an um, combat sports athlete for most of her life, she's still kind of able to sustain that level of competition. Because I think for most people at that age, their chin and just their overall sort of health as a result of fighting for so many years, as most people at that age have been, their bodies just kind of worn down. And so they just can't take the same level of punishment as somebody who's 10 years younger, even five years younger can. And I think for her, that's why she's the exception. And, you know, I've always thought for Holly too, I feel like she is definitely slowing down. Um, she is 35, she's gonna be 36 this year. Um, and it's not even just that she's 35 though, it's that she has had a really long career in combat sports because she has been boxing and uh, had a short kickboxing career basically since she was like 18 or 19 years old. So, you know, that's a long time to be putting your body through that and it, you're going to feel the effects of the wear and tear at some point. So I definitely feel like that time has really come for her. Um, and yeah, so I'll, um, it's like my preliminary kind of uh, take on it in terms of the overall picture. Um, now, I definitely, I mean, you know, this wasn't an evenly matched fight. And I think that's, I feel like the Holly Holm fans are already like, oh, Audrey, we do a title shot and all this stuff. And like, I'm like, you got to chill. You got to realize she beat... Betch Kohea, okay? This is not a highly ranked opponent. This is not someone who's like a legend in women's MMA or MMA in general. This isn't somebody who's like a legit opponent, really. I mean, not that Betch is a complete slouch. I do think she has her strong points and obviously she can fight, but you know, she's not like a household name. She's never gonna be the UFC champion, you know? So, um, it's just, and even the rankings, you know, she was ranked number 11 and Holly Holm was ranked number five. So, you know, so it's a big difference in terms of where they even fell in the rankings because Betch is not even in the top 10. And really, Marion Renault is somehow ranked below Betch and I'm like, how does that work out? Because they fought in a draw. So anyway, um, I think even Betch is a little like up in the rankings more than she should be. Um, but... Yeah, you know, so th this was kind of a tune-up fight in, in every sense of the word for Holly Holm. I mean, this is not like a world-class opponent. This isn't like a world champion level fighter. So, you know, I don't think the victory should be taken like that seriously where it's like, oh my gosh, she's back, you know, because there's just not that credibility that's built into it. 
Maybe if she next beats somebody in the top 10 in a really devastating fashion, maybe then, you know, we have some argument, but obviously that hasn't happened yet. And also another weird thing about the rankings is that Jermaine Durandamy is ranked as number 10, even though she beat Holly Holm. And I know that was featherweight, but still like Jermaine Durandamy is a whole other subject, but still <laughs> it doesn't seem very fair to me. I mean, the rankings aren't really known for being fair, but still. So, um, you know, going into this fight, honestly, I was rooting for Betch Cohea. I will say it. I know Holly is like everyone's girl and Holly Holm interests me and intrigues me and I actually do follow her closely. Um, and I think a lot of that too is like her fighting style and just, I don't know, I'm just kind of fascinated by her as a figure in general. Um, I always have thought if I ever got into fighting that I would have a similar fighting style as her, uh, maybe a little bit more aggressive, but similar kind of kickboxing, uh, style. And we have similar strengths. Like I'm also a Southpaw. Um, so I really like her and I kind of study her, um, quite frequently in the way that she moves and the way that she fights overall, um, the different techniques that she employs, you know, offensively, defensively, the whole gamut. So I do like Holly Holm, but I feel like I probably will always have some kind of a chip on my shoulder about, for her because of Ronda Rousey. I'm definitely a Ronda Rousey fan still, maybe not as big as I used to be, but I still really have a lot of respect for her. So I don't know. I'm just like not that into it. <laughs> and, um... So I was rooting for Betch Cohea, and I just thought it would be an interesting shakeup. Like, if she can beat Holly Holm, you know, I just think it would make the bantamweight division a lot more interesting. Because 2016 was a great year for the bantamweight division, but it's kind of stalled out a little bit. Like, I was actually looking at the rankings last night, and not many of the girls in the top 15 even have even fought this year or even have fights booked. So it seems like things have just kind of stalled out a little bit. Other than, I guess, for uh, Pena versus Shevchenko, which happened in January, and I thought that was a fantastic fight, and I love Valentina Shevchenko. Um, and then, obviously, her and Nunez are going to fight for the title in a couple weeks, but other than that, there hasn't really been a lot of action. Like, I don't even know who the next title challenger might be. Probably Rocky Pennington, and I think that would... She's on a four-fight win streak, but she's also injured, from what I understand. So, I don't know. Um... Seems like a tough question to be answered. And I hope to God it's not Holly Holm because she does not deserve it yet, at least. <laughs> not yet. She hasn't earned that yet. Um, so, any, so going into the actual fight, um, I definitely did think Holly was going to win. I mean, it's hard to argue with her level of striking and just her level of experience compared to Betch, you know. Just not the same. And even the technique, you know, Betch is known for being a brawler. She's really not technical and doesn't embrace that side of fighting. Whereas Holly Holm is like kind of the ultimate technician. Um, which sometimes though, you know, I definitely, sometimes the brawler can be favored in that situation because they throw the technician for a loop and it's hard for the technician to know like how to apply their technique because the brawler is doing things that are very unorthodox that they're not, um, that they haven't been taught, that they haven't seen a lot, you know, because technician is all about like, oh, if you do this, I need to do this. Or if I do this, the person will react this way. And when, and a brawler doesn't necessarily fall into that sort of like logic um, and so I think sometimes it's hard for technicians to adjust to that, like, uh, sort of unknown pace. So I definitely thought that that was a potential opportunity for Betch and the whole counter-striking thing. I mean, you know, how do you beat Holly Holm? You just counter-strike. You wait for her to lead. I mean, that's the blueprint on how to beat Holly Holm, you know, is up. Like that's been around now for a little bit of time. And it seems like pretty much every opponent going into fights against her now uses that. And they're smart too, because even in this fight, you know, she really didn't necessarily overcome that. Um, and I have to say, well, I have to say overall, I wasn't that impressed with her performance. Obviously the head kick knockout and that was great. And, you know, kudos to Holly. For that and it was a great finish and it wasn't a decision you know because the only finish up until this fight that holly's had in the ufc was a ronda 
Um, and before that, she used to be a finishing machine, but not in the UFC. So I think it was good for her to have that win that wasn't a decision to kind of also solidify her credibility. Because I think like a split decision win or something like that wouldn't have been awesome for her, even though it was a win. So, you know, I, obviously she's the better fighter. Obviously she performed better, for sure. Um, but, you know, I would say Betch won the second round pretty handedly. Um, the first round, you know, could have gone either way. And that, you know, even for the referee to, like, pull them aside and basically say, hey, you know, you guys have got to actually, like, fight in here. It takes a lot for that. To, you know, you don't see that every day. So you know that there's, you know, just not that sense of urgency happening if if that is the case, if the ref has to go to that length to actually get them to, like, hit each other, you know? So, I, you know, it's not like Holly dominated the entire three rounds um, of her performance. It's not like she just, you know, completely steamrolled over Betch and Betch, you know, had no answer. Betch got some good shots in, and you, you probably saw that Holly's lip was kind of cut open and bleeding a little bit. Um, looked really swollen as well after in her post-fight interview. So it's not like Betch didn't do anything. You know, she actually did a little bit of damage. And yeah, that second round, I just think for sure, I like I was you know scoring it mentally as as one does watching the fight. First round, I thought was close. You know, nobody really was making hardly any moves so it was hard to say I would say probably home if I had to pick a winner because I think she got a few good sidekicks in but that was really about it wasn't much to base it off of um I would almost can you score around as a draw I guess yeah you can so me I might have even scored it that way if I was a judge um and I thought round two definitely was uh 10-9 Kohea and I actually thought maybe she would get something off. And I think definitely the taunting, um, it's interesting because I think it was an interesting, like, I can understand why she did it um, to see if Holly's mental game was there. Especially after losing three fights, you know, you're going to question yourself. You're going to have some mental blocks that come up because of that. How could it? Not, how could they not? And so I think it was actually kind of a, almost... It, it, could have worked it was a risky strategy and the and the risk obviously didn't pay off in this situation but I can understand why she did it and to see how strong mentally Holly really was and if she'd be able to handle something like that or if taunting like that was going to break her so I totally get why she did it and even like the timing that she did it in um you know in the third round I totally can see why she would do it and I think that's just Betcha's personality anyway you know she's known to essentially sort of give the finger to everybody and you know she just doesn't give any fucks right so i got it. i understood why she did it it was definitely a mistake though and it definitely cost her because as we all know you know she ended up getting head kicked because of that and you know having her hands kind of down i think was the ultimate um like the ultimate travesty and you know that gave holly the perfect opening for a head kick especially because betch is so much shorter than home and has a sh shorter reach you know if you're having your hands down it makes you really really vulnerable to getting hit so um yeah you know and and obviously holly was able to capitalize on that and you know it definitely showed me that home is maybe a little tougher than i thought in terms of she didn't break mentally you know she was able to hang in there and she didn't let the taunting get to her obviously <laughs> obviously it didn't break her so um obviously she has worked through all of those demons now i'm not like i said i'm not that impressed because i think overall you know if you look at the other two rounds especially you know, I, like, I didn't, you know, see anything new. And I knew I wasn't going to, you know, because Holly up and kind of leading up in the press junkets and media day and whatnot was saying, like, oh, you're going to see something new and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I knew that that wasn't the case. I mean, like, when you're 30, 35, almost 36 years old, you've been doing combat sports for, like, 18 or 19 years, um you're just not going to see any new and that's fine it's just i just knew that that was going to be the case and i definitely felt like very lackluster you know if she hadn't 
I almost wonder if Beck hadn't decided to taunt her if the outcome could have potentially been different. Even like maybe she wouldn't have finished her. Um, Cause I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Holm has that same like drive to move forward. I think not looking at her UFC fights, but if you look at her fights in Legacy, and um, I believe she also had a fight in Bellator. If you look at her early fights, like before pre UFC, um, she, she's like a different fighter. Like. The way that she fought was so different. She was a lot more aggressive. Um, she was just, it seemed a lot faster. She was a lot, she wasn't as hesitant. I feel like she has a hesitancy now in her fighting that she didn't used to have. And uh, again, you can't really see this much unless you look pre-UFC. Pre she had um, a similar kind of urgency against Ronda Rousey, but other than that, fight you know she's had like seven fights in the ufc now i haven't seen it um and i still haven't didn't see it in this fight so like i i encourage you if you haven't watched those fights to go and watch some because she just fights differently she's cleaner she's smoother she's um it just seems like she's a lot more like eager to punch somebody in the face or to kick them in the head <laughs> um and i just don't get that from her now and so yeah, I, I don't know if she's ever going to bring... I don't know if she can ever bring that back. And if um, she's going to be able to be that version of herself again. I don't know. Um, and I don't think... And just even looking at the... Or even in the third round, looking at the overall fight, do I think that she, as it stands now, what I've seen, is able to really beat anybody in the top five? I don't think so. I don't see that happening. I mean, for sure, can you really see her beating like Amanda Nunez? Or, you know, obviously she didn't, she can't beat Valentina Shevchenko because we saw that fight last year. Um, you know, I don't, I don't see it happening. I don't see who she's gonna be able to beat. And yeah, I just, I don't see it. I don't see her ever getting her hands on the belt. I don't, I don't see that really being possible unless the UFC, like, I don't see her getting the belt again. Um, I don't even see her getting a title shot unless the UFC, like, just decides to hand one to her, which I could see happening, unfortunately, just because she's such a big name. I mean, as it is, three fight losing streak and she's still a main event, you know, which is crazy because <laughs> you definitely, you know, you, you're not really deserving of that if you've lost three fights in a row. So... If they're gonna go that direction, you know, I will I will be disappointed because I don't think she deserves it Especially not after like just this one fight where she didn't even fight somebody in the top ten You know, she's gotta have at least one more fight and with a much higher ranked opponent to actually earn a title shot And I even think probably like really she probably needs two more two more wins Because um, coming off a three fight losing streak. I mean man like I just don't know how how you can get around that or justify it, you know. So I don't um, I don't see it happening, and I and I think you know maybe she has a couple more fights in her, um, and then she retires. I mean, I hope she does because um, I think if she goes t too much longer, she's gonna get her ass handed to her, especially if she fights higher ranked opponents. Um, or else, you know, just concede that, you know, you're fighting and that's what you want to do, but you're probably not going to get to the belt. So this was really long, but I wanted to kind of give a little bit of my thoughts and, uh, yeah, I mean, in, ter and in terms of where she can go from here, I'd still kind of like to see Betch rematch Marion Renault. I don't know. I doubt that's going to happen, but I would, I do think it would make sense in this situation. Um, and I'm sure Marion Renault is more than happy to. <laughs> and for Holly Holm, I would say fighting a higher ranked opponent. I mean, I think it's up to her and the UFC. Like, do they want to throw her kind of right back to the wolves and somebody in the top five? Or maybe somebody in the top ten who's like in like the number ten through six slot somewhere in there to kind of still warm her up a little bit. Um 
before she goes like you know all the way to the top and I would say I would advise them to to give her somebody you know to kind of climb the ladder again give her someone in the top 10 but not in the top five even somebody like a Liz Carmouche she was supposed to fight Sarah McMahon but she got injured and you know Sarah maybe even Sarah McMahon I mean Sarah McMahon's on a two fight win streak and she's ranked number six and I believe Holm is ranked number five right now and so that would be a good fight and if Sarah can win that fight then she definitely I think could make a case for another title shot so you know that I think that would be a really good matchup um yeah so let me know what you think uh what you thought about the fight what you think about like going forward for her um and this was really fun I might do it again so thank you for watching and uh have a great weekend <laughs>